hey guys welcome back to my channel and to my february reading wrap up um so this month i read 11 books um some of them were on my kindle um whether that be they were oh i only had the kindle version or whether or there was one book on here was it one yeah there was one book in here um no two where i read the um kindle version um but let's just kind of get into it but yeah obviously i had a good reading month i read for Earthwing by rebecca yaros i had read about half of it in um january all around i'd read at least 200 pages of it in january yeah i enjoyed this i rated it four and a half stars i obviously so many people didn't enjoy it didn't see the hype but obviously you've got to think this book be probably became popular um in, in for those who reading about dragons is something that they enjoy i love reading about dragons i don't read about i haven't really read about them like stories involving dragons in a long while that was definitely a thing that i did back more i was say more in primary school um when i read aragon so this was kind of a good one to get me back into the kind of fan fantasy world with dragons um like this wasn't my first fantasy since getting back into reading but it was my first dragons book well no technically it wasn't because obviously i read ascendant in january um but like you kind of get what i mean so yeah i rated it a four and a half stars on goodreads i put it as a five um i do think goodreads should do half ratings i could understand them not doing like 0.5s or 0.75s but i think they should do the point fives but yeah i really enjoyed this um and i do intend to order iron flame trade paperback from ireland sometime soon but like quite literally bought so many books today so i kind of think i'll wait a month before i do that um but yeah that was the first book then i read trick and mate by ellie hazelwood i basically read this on my kindle as you can see because every went last time i updated you in my video reading Ali Hazelwood's books. I don't know whether I'll have put this up before this or after this. Um but anyway, my last dog ear, so front of the book, my last dog ear was here, um from clearly from when I'd from the update just before I finished it. I don't know. Um I enjoyed this. I I had gone over my clips earlier just because I'm putting them all together before I go through and edit it. In my clip, I rated this three stars, um, and I'd said that I didn't think it would be like a 3.5. Um, I don't know. I think maybe like 3.25 if we were going to be specific, because I definitely enjoyed this more than, um, than the Love Hypothesis. Um, Love Hypothesis was definitely a bit of a bit boring to me. Um, so Love Hypothesis was a three star. I mentioned that in my wrap january wrap up um but yeah i think this would maybe be a 3.25 could potentially creep up to a 3.5 because i enjoyed it a little bit more um but i think part of me wanted a little bit more romance i think we focused a lot on chess um then i read listened to beyond the wand by tom felton this was a good experience it was, i didn't I haven't been like following along with him like over the years obviously i know him as draco malfoy um love the character of draco um i'm currently te technically in the middle of my reread of harry potter um like in january i had finished um the order of no i'd finished the goblet of fire um and the next book that i would be starting is the order of the phoenix um but it was interesting to find out about him and his life in between finishing Harry Potter and now and obviously also the bits of him growing up as well because obviously it's interesting to find out kind of what goes on kind of on set in a way like it didn't really touch too much upon that but like in general so that was interesting I didn't give this a rating just because it was someone's personal story um and personal life um but yeah 
anyway the next book i literally read in 15 minutes and that's heartstopper number one um i rated this three stars in fact i could potentially put it as like a 2.5 i don't think i'm this book's intended audience i just because of how let me go to a page right at the start like this is literally the first page so i'm not giving away spoilers um and that's kind of the general text amount for well like going on to that that's pretty much all that there is to it hence why it took me 15 minutes um part of me did read it because i knew it was going to be a quick read i have a spreadsheet where i've got all the series that i'd started um and although i've only read the first book i've put this as being completed just because i'm not going to pick up the next ones like this like i said i'm not the intended reader this book isn't for me i prefer more words um and so having like an average of 10 words on a page just isn't isn't for me but again i could understand why people do enjoy it but again the fact that i read basically what 250 pages but yeah there was literally like 250 maybe even less yeah i'm just not the intended audience um then i read the seven year slip by ashley poston i freaking loved this i rated it five stars i just i loved it i understand why people were hyping it up and like loving it because i loved it um i read this purely on kindle i got it for 99p um and i yeah i just loved it then i read bride by ellie hazelwood again i read it in the same video as checkmate basically i read three ellie hazelwood books this month um this is a paranormal romance um which follows along with misery who is in an arranged marriage with so misery is a vampire and she is in an arranged marriage with lo who is the alpha of a werewolf pack um and we're kind of following along with like her reasonings and like her missing best friend um yeah so i originally rated this four stars on goodreads i think in reality it might be like a 3.75 because after watching rachel talk about this book i think actually i said this in the video like the video where i read the yellow hazelwood books but i've seen rachel talk about how actually the whole mystery element of like the best friend carried the plot along and i do agree although it's marketed as a romance there isn't too much romance and in some ways it's like an insta love although i do recommend this book don't go into it expecting a romance heavy plot it's not i enjoyed the interactions with lo's sister um lily i think no it's anna i think it's just because her full name is Li liliana i still enjoyed this again still recommend it but again don't go into it romance heavy I think this is the first time I've actually been so soon to read a book after its release. Um, I bought it on the day it was it came out, literally. I just so happened to be in the works looking for a different book and I'd seen that and it was perfect. Um, then I read Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. This is the second book in the When in Rome series. I haven't read, I didn't, I haven't read When in Rome, partly because I didn't realise it was part of a CU series. Um, or when I did find out I wasn't too bothered um, by not reading the first. This is like a small town kind of romance. In the first book, I'm aware that the main male character, so the main male character for Practice Makes Perfect, in the first book is the bodyguard of the main female character of When in Rome, um, Amelia, that's her name. Um, and then in Practice Makes Perfect, the main female character is the sister of the love interest in the first book anyway so i i enjoyed this book i rated it four stars um just because there were times when i think it was just not captivating me or like it felt a little bit slow i still enjoyed it but like i would recommend if you're one who's usually i am interested in reading like the first in a series um but if you're not like interested just i would still recommend 
it might be that you only end up finding it as like a palette cleanser but I would still recommend the book um then I read The No Show by Beth O'Leary I basically read this on yeah I did read it on Kindle let me take out the dog ear despite the because I don't know why I had dog eared it um I think it was in case I decided to pick up the physical copy um I so I've read her backlist I haven't read her most recent one which is the wake up call the physical the paperback copy of that comes out in June so I do intend to pick it up then um this one it just it felt I was underwhelmed I really was um I think because this followed three different women and their stories didn't converge at all now the ending makes sense as to why they didn't overlap but i just don't think this is for me um yeah literally i've read the flat share the switch and the road trip my favorite out of her previous ones is the road trip i love me a dual timeline romance i just do and i'm not gonna say any more about this book but yeah i was a little bored reading it and i felt like i should have been further along in the book than i was despite even reading it on my kindle um so yeah take with that what you will i wouldn't this definitely is not the best book i really was disappointed with that book because i did really enjoy all her other books but it just it felt like it was missing the Beth O'Leary magic. Then I read The Maidens by Alex Michelides, or however the hell you pronounce his surname. Um, I, so this is, so he's the author of The Silent Patient. This follows along with a therapist um, whose niece ha has a best friend that died. Um, and she's gone to Cambridge where the niece is studying to support her. Mariana, the therapist, was at Cambridge years earlier um, and had lost, basically she'd had a um, loss in her past which kind of had, was interwoven with some of the way she was thinking um, and there was kind of like a main um, kind of suspect in her mind, but people didn't see it. Um, yeah, did not see the ending, which was the same with The Silent Patient. But this one just, I rated it at four stars, but this one didn't hit me as much as The Silent Patient. There was definitely a different aspect and also this is set before the silent patient because the therapist i don't think this is a spoiler but the therapist from the silent patient appears very briefly in the book for this one um and if you know the end of the silent patient could be that i rated it um a little bit ahead it also could be that i'm filming this at basically 11 pm and so my mind is just like not thinking straight um yeah I didn't enjoy this as much as The Silent Patient but I still think it was good um and when his book The Fury comes out in paperback probably in a year's time I do think I'd be interested to pick it up um yeah then I read Love on the Brain by Ellie Hazelwood this was my final book for my Ellie Hazelwood video um and this follows along with B, who is a neuroscientist the love interest is Levi who's like an injured is like an engineer um and they're working on like a project together um and there was some past where he didn't treat her right to her appears to be doing the same he's mist misunderstood sometimes in the best way um and obviously they there's like a little there is like a little subplot of mystery in here um not too much definitely nowhere near as much as what bride like it's very much a subplot um and the romance is definitely a forefront i think this is definitely my favorite annie hazelwood book just because i felt like there was more character time um 
again i think with all of her books i would have loved a male point of view like i just i think in some ways i do enjoy the dual povs a little bit more because you get insight into the mind of into the mind of the guy and like what's going on and like his perception of things so like with some of the difficulties they were facing with this project it would have been good to have seen like his kind of thoughts and like his annoyances with like things going wrong um but yeah i do still i do i would definitely recommend this um for a more romance heavy or at least like a more character heavy book like this is definitely rivals to lovers whereas the love hypothesis definitely because one of the things again with it just being a one character pov the love hypothesis just felt too focused on olive's research kind of thing and not enough in some ways of the time with adam i don't know this just felt like because they were working together because they spent more time together I just enjoyed it that little bit more um and then the final book that i read in the month of february was the naturals by jennifer lynn barnes i literally started this at like half 11 on the 28th um read like 46 percent of it in like two and a half hours because i could not sleep or was it two and a half hours it might have even only been like two um but i could not sleep at all even though i had work that morning <clears throat> then i came back finished love on the brain and then finished the naturals with like half an hour to go so i literally finished it in 24 hours and i could have finished it in one sitting if it wasn't for work if it wasn't for the fact that i had to go to work to earn money granted i was the one who picked to work that day but I'm working again tomorrow um but yeah i rated this five and a half stars so easy so quick i looked at the amount of pages for like the physical book and there's only like well my kindle version had like 310 305 pages i don't know how many pages the physical book is but it was super quick so so quick i want to pick up the next book so badly also i kind of now want to own the physical copies just because the second book is in 99p but i really want to read the second book um maybe i'll have to buy it later in the month on kindle we'll see what the kindle daily deals are because if it comes up in a daily deal what can i say my bank balance might hate me but yeah again if it went down to a more reasonable price yeah then then i'd be more likely to buy it but currently it's 3.99 and although the actual physical book is 8.99 um i don't know four quid just seems a bit too expensive for an ebook i don't know i hope you guys enjoyed this like reading wrap up let me know what books you read in the in february or even what books you want to read in march and i will see you guys in my next video bye bye